Merry Christmas and thanks for tuning in to Discovery Church Online. If you have any questions or want to learn more about who we are as a church, check us out online by going to ilovediscovery.church. You can stay connected everywhere you go with our Discovery Church app. It's free from wherever you download your apps from. Today, we're having our Christmas special, Christmas at Discovery, and our senior pastor, Jason Hanish, teaches us how God became man to close the gap and to have a relationship with us through the birth of Jesus. Every year we have one service that we dedicate the Sunday before Christmas, and we dedicate it as just a Christmas service. There's a lot of carols. There's a lot of unique things that we do for this service. We even condense the service a little bit to get you guys out of here. Go do your Christmas Eve stuff. Go watch your football, whatever it is you guys do on Christmas Eve. And then at the end of the service here, we're going to do a candle lighting. We always do a candle lighting. It's tradition here at Discovery. And then the kids after that are going to do a little special for you as well. Today, my Christmas message to you, I've titled uh, Missing Christmas. And I believe God has a word for us in this um, missing Christmas. So easy, you guys, to, to just miss the true meaning of Christmas. And I would even say for even those of you that don't check out on me now, because some of you, um, you've been in Christ for a long time. Like this is your, I don't know how many Christmases you've been celebrated at church before, but you celebrate a lot of, say, a lot of Christmases at church. Can I tell you something? That, that it is harder for those of us who have been in Christ longer, celebrated Christmas after Christmas after Christmas to keep Christmas about Jesus. It's, it's easier for us to miss it over time because over time Christmas gets cluttered. It becomes about other things and where I need to go and what I need to do and the presents I need to get and then all the agendas and it's so easy to miss Christmas. So no matter whether, whether you are new to Christ, don't know Jesus, or have known Christ for a long time and have celebrated Christmas, I believe God has something to say to you today. Even the very first Christmas that there ever was, everybody missed it. Everybody missed the first Christmas. I mean, to put it in context for you, you guys, this was the, the prophesied coming of the king, of God, of 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 the prophecy that they didn't even knew a town, that Bethlehem, the, and everybody missed it. The one that they've been waiting for, they missed the Messiah, the birth. Well, almost everybody, it was just one class of people. Only one class of people, you know, were there at the birth of Christ. It's in your notes there in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Let me read you a part of the Christmas story, which, by the way, we have some um, scriptures up here on the screen. If you're new to Discovery, you, you should have got some notes. You can take some notes along with us. If you want somewhere to put those notes, your, your notes should be three-hole punch, and we give away free, you know, small message note binders in the lobby. So if you want to go grab that on your way out, make sure you do that. Put your notes inside that binder. Luke chapter 2 says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. We'll come back to the shepherds in a moment. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause joy for all the people. These shepherds were the only ones present when Jesus was born. I think it's a common misnomer. One of the common misnomers of Christmas is that there was like all these other people there. And we get the nativity scene, right? And that's where it kind of comes from. In the nativity scene, you got these wise men, you got all these animals and shepherds and other you know, other just people that are, that are there. That's, that's actually not what happened. The biblical account just has the shepherds are the only people there. The wise men actually come much later to visit Jesus. All right, so it's just the shepherds. And everyone else is missing it. Everyone else is. I did some research and looked up some articles. And USA Today ran a front page article some years back. This was the headline. Jesus is no longer the reason for the season. They said Christmas is no longer about Jesus' birth. It's just a month-long party with friends. That Christmas, at Christmas, you take a break and go on vacation. He said, it's been downgraded on the religious calendar, said Barry Cosman of the Institute of Study of Secularism. He says, come, O come, all ye partiers. Now trumps, O come, all ye faithful for nearly a third of Americans. The same article did a survey um, and said that Today, more parents tell their kids about Santa than they do about the birth of Jesus. 
The Huffington Post, James Martin, wrote that even though retailers owed their entire profits to Christmas, that they treat Jesus, he says, as he who must not be named like the villain of Harry Potter. What's going on here in our culture? Man, we're missing the point of Christmas. We're totally missing it. We can say season's greetings, happy holidays, but, but Jesus is not found, Christ is not found in a lot of Christmases. Uh, there are a few reasons, I'd like to give you a few reasons that people miss Christmas in the Bible. Like why, why, why did everybody miss it? There's a few reasons that they missed it, and I would even submit to you today that those reasons are the same reasons that you and I, yeah, you and, and I can miss it today. Like we can miss Christmas. I want you to take some notes with me. Jot them down in, in that outline that you have. Here's the first reason uh, that we can miss Christmas is that we don't pay attention. We don't pay attention. We're not even aware when Jesus shows up in our lives. I mean, God is showing up in our lives, in and around our lives all the time. And we don't recognize it. God shows up in the opportunities that you didn't think that you were going to get. God shows up in the difficulties and problems because he wants you to grow through them. God is showing up through the words of affirmation and encouragement and sometimes even correction when we need it. God is all around us showing up. We just don't see him. You know, we don't recognize him. And this is a common problem. Among a lot of people, it's, it was common in the Bible. Jesus often was unrecognized by people. People did not know that the person speaking to them was the Son of God, was the Savior of the world. On one occasion, Jesus, or the, these two guys were walking down this road to Emmaus, and Jesus just shows up and starts walking with them. And it says that they saw him in Luke 24, but somehow didn't recognize him. They didn't realize it was Jesus. Another time, Jesus is sitting by this well, and this woman comes up to draw up some water from it, and Jesus asks her for a drink. And then this woman did not know who she was engaging, that she was actually in conversation with the Savior of the world. And she actually begins a religious argument with this guy, with Jesus. And Jesus tells her, he says, Look, John 4, 10, if you only knew... If you only knew that I'm showing up in your life, if you only knew I'm walking by your side, if you only knew I was in that opportunity, if you only knew I was in that problem, I was in that challenge, if you only knew the gift of God for you and who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink and I'd give you living water. And Jesus shows up in our lives and so often we do the same, we're just unaware of it. Today, Thousands of Americans will be doing last-minute Christmas shopping. Some of you are going to be doing some last-minute Christmas shopping probably after the service right now or going to the grocery store, getting some last-minute items. And overhead, what's going to be playing in those stores? Born today is the King of Kings. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Come, let us adore him. Christ the Savior is born. Hark the herald angels sing. All around us during this season, Jesus is being proclaimed, and he is present, and we're missing him. All around us, Americans are hearing and Jesus is being proclaimed, and we're missing it. We're totally oblivious. We're just not paying attention when he shows up. Here's the second reason we can miss it, and that is that we, write this down, we get crowded with other things. We just get crowded. Have you ever noticed this? This is a profound truth, you guys. Stuff accumulates. Have you ever noticed that? That stuff just tends to accumulate, particularly in garages, overnight, they just accumulate. I don't know how it is. It's a miracle. You know, it's just overnight things. I've tried to catch my garage multiplying overnight, but I've never caught it actually multiplying. But somehow I go to bed, I wake up, and I'm like, where in the world did all this junk come from? My wife and I used to watch this show, Clean House. You remember that show, Clean House? It was about the hoarders. You know, it's that TV show. They, were, they, were, they would go to this hoarders, the hoarders house, and they would get all that stuff from the house, and they'd bring it all out onto the, onto the front lawn, and they'd categorize it, and they'd sell some stuff and throw stuff away and give stuff away and keep the essentials and move it back in. And, and, that's, and, and then how long did that last, you know? 
And I know what you're thinking. I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, well, I'm not, I'm not that bad. Okay, okay. Let's get some Christmas honesty right now, okay? How many of you today can't park your car in your garage? Come on now, don't be lying. Come on, come on. You, you guys are lying. I know you're lying, okay? You know you can't park that. Can I tell you something? Your, your, car, your garage was meant for cars, not your stuff. It, your car, it was built the way it was designed. It was designed for your car, not your stuff. Listen, can I tell you something? Your heart was made for God, not for stuff. Your heart, the purpose of your heart, it wasn't made for all this extra junk that we kind of just cram in there. It was made for God. Luke chapter 2 says this, continuing on the Christmas story. It says, while they were there, Mary and Joseph in the town of Bethlehem, it says the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because, look at this, there was no room for Jesus. There was no room for them in the end. Sorry, Jesus, our guests have occupied the space. I mean, we got rooms. There's just no vacancy. There's just no room for you. Look, this is a parallel of your heart. Your heart was meant to hold God. You were created to have God on the inside of you. You were created by God and for God. And until you understand that, your life will never make sense. So what happens when we fill our lives with other things and we invite other guests in to rent out the space in our hearts to other things that there's no room for Jesus? The heart's there. I mean, we have our hearts, but it's just filled with other ideas, other interests, other values, other loves, other commitments and there's just no more room this christmas for jesus mark 4 10 says they are overwhelmed with worries about all look at this all the things they have to do and all the things they want to get that's what christmas has turned into for so many people it's all it's turned into all the things I have to do. Man, the list of things I have to do and all the things I need to get and I want to get. No wonder we're so stressed out. He says that stress strangles what you what they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and nothing can come of it. No wonder. I mean, after Christmas vacation, we want to go on another vacation like we need a vacation from our vacation because it was so busy and hectic. And God has some gifts for you this Christmas. God wants you to experience something different. He doesn't want you to miss it this Christmas. Look at first Corinthians chapter two says that the unspiritual person has no room for the gifts of God's spirit to him. They are folly. He cannot even recognize them. I can't put out anything more in there because I'm already crammed full of stuff. Some of your closets are a picture of that. You got full closets. If people were to like bless you with a new wardrobe, you would not even be able to put it in there. You, you'd have to remove some things, get some things out of your closet to bring in something new. We, miss, so we can miss Christmas. And some of us are missing Christmas just because we're not noticing Jesus all around us. We're not maybe making room maybe we're just too crowded our life is just too crowded with stuff and other things or thirdly write this down some of you may just think you don't need jesus you don't need god you don't need christmas we have this sense of self-sufficiency that says i'm doing pretty well on my own i mean i'm uh, I'm, I'm doing okay really you may be living a good life you say i'm living the good life well that's great would you like to know if there's a better life because I mean, we find that the good life is good, but it's not good enough. In Christ, there is a better life. Can I get an amen? When I was a kid, my mom fed me SpaghettiOs. Oh, man, I love SpaghettiOs, huh? Anyone remember SpaghettiOs when you were a kid? SpaghettiOs, that was, I was living the good life when I got SpaghettiOs. That was until I got older, and I discovered In-N-Out Burger. Then I started living the better life. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah, okay? All right? Some of you, you're, 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 you're just satisfied with the good life, but God has a better life for you. Wouldn't you be interested if God had something better to offer than the good that you're satisfied with? 
Matthew chapter 2. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who was born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, look at this, he was disturbed. He was disturbed. Now, I know a lot of you don't really liken yourself to King Herod, and rightly so. He's a pretty evil dude. But, listen, King Herod was, was fine with religion. King Herod was fine with going to the temple. He was just not okay with submitting to a king. Why? Because you know, I'm king of the Jews. I'm the king of my life. I don't need a king. I don't need a savior. I'm good. And some people are missing Christmas because of the pride and the arrogance of their life. Like you, you don't want to miss this Christmas. Because this is, this is the, big, the, the big why of Christmas, the big idea, like the big why it matters so much is because on this day, God came to us. Oh man, you don't know how big a deal that is. God, the Bible says in Isaiah, the, pro, the prophecy of Jesus, one of them in Isaiah chapter 9, it's not in your notes, but it says, the virgin shall be with child and conceive a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. You see, on this day, God became man and came to us. For centuries, for all of, e all of history, man has attempted through religion to get to God. If we could just be good enough, if I could just do the right things, if I could just go to church enough and give enough and do, and, and it never could work. It could never cleanse the soul. But on this day, God came to man. God Close the gap between us and him. On this day, Jesus demolished religion just for a chance at a relationship with you. Knowing that, that some of us would, would not even recognize him when he comes into our life. Not even recognize him in the opportunities and in the, in the, on the road passing by. That some of us wouldn't even have room for him. Or some of us would even dare to say, I'm good, Jesus. I don't need you. He came just for a chance at a relationship with you. On this day, God came to us that's why you don't want to miss christmas this is how the bible says it luke chapter 2 11 for on this day in the town of david a savior has come to birth who is christ the lord let me give you three things i could have given you dozens of things uh, that that you don't want to miss that was made available to you on this day like i let me say it this way god has some gifts for you today like on this day, on, on Christmas, God made available through Christ some gifts for you. And I'm telling you, you don't want to miss another Christmas. Write these down. On this day, what did God make available to you? What's the importance? I just kind of uh, dwindled them down really to just three things. Just combined everything that God did into three things I want to give you today. Number one, on this day, peace was born. On this day, peace was born. Some of you desperately need the peace of God. And you're seeking peace. You're seeking security. You're seeking some type of comfort in all the wrong places. Look, peace was born. The Bible says that peace isn't something that you can actually have yourself. Not true peace, but there is a peace of the world that is temporary, that is fleeting, that will not last that, that you can get pills or drugs or relationships or alcohol or therapy or whatever. All those things cannot last. It's not the peace that God has to offer. The Bible says that peace is a person. He is called the Prince of, the Prince of Peace. Look what the Bible says here in Luke, continuing the Christmas story. It says, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And, and here's another misnomer. The Bible says, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. One of the 
misnomers of Christmas is that some people misquote this often, and they say, you know, peace on earth. And, and the Bible doesn't say that. I just, you, you need to know, the Bible does never promise peace on earth. That's your Christmas card greeting, not Bible, okay? The Bible says, li- it literally says, on earth, meaning w- w- uh, amidst the turmoil and the trials and the difficulty, on earth, God has available for you peace to men on whom his favor rests. See, what that means is that I don't need to go seeking after peace, running hard to get peace. All I need is to build a relationship with the Prince of Peace. Peace was born on this day and was made available to us. John 14, 27 says, Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift. Man, I'm telling you, God has some gifts for you. They're all wrapped up. They're ready to go. It's in a nice little bro- bow. Like on this day, God has made available to you some gifts. He says, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you, it isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. It isn't temporary and short-lived like the world. So don't be troubled or afraid. See, on this day, peace was born. And you can, you can have that peace today. You don't need to go look for it anymore. You don't need to search it, try to find it, and other things like today. On this day, peace is born. Here's the second thing. On this day, purpose was given. Purpose was given. I love how Jesus shows up on the scene of history, don't you? Like Jesus, the King, Emmanuel, God with us, the Son of God, he could have you would think logically when if God was going to like herald the announcement of his son that God with us like it would have been heralded to like kings or someone in authority or with power or maybe even religious leaders like Pharisees or Sadducees or someone in the Sanhedrin or something but God did not make the announcement to nobles God made the announcement of his son to the lowly shepherds God made this announcement. And, and if you don't know uh, anything about like, like Bible history and stuff, the shepherds were the lowliest class of citizens in that day. They were considered to be spiritually and ceremonially unclean because their work kept them out of the temple. Their work kept them away from the practices. They were touching unclean things. And they, they, it was just, they were the lowliest of jobs. And Jesus, God shows up on the scene and says, I place value on you. There is purpose for you. He heralded the announcement to these lowly of lowly uh, uh, shepherds. And God is saying purpose was given. God says you are significant. You have value. You were made with a purpose. See, this world and our society will place purpose on people based on how much they make, based on what they look like, based on what they, where they live. But God says, no, on this day, purpose is given to every soul. I made you unique. I made you significant. I placed my spirit in you and there is value inside of every living person. On this day, purpose was given. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says that that smallness you feel, it comes from, he says that smallness that you feel that you bought into these lies that you're not good enough and that there isn't something unique and special and significant about you. He says that didn't come from God. That smallness you feel comes from you. That your lives aren't small, but you bought into this lie of the enemy, and therefore you're living them in a small way. And then he says, open up your lives. Man, I hope this Christmas, that's what you do today, that you just open up your lives to Jesus. He says, live openly and expansively. God has a purpose for your life. John 10.10 says that the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he's been doing possibly in your life, just taking from things, destroying. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. You see, this is why you don't want to miss Christmas, because peace was born, because purpose was given to every person. And then number three, kind of leads to number three, power was released. See, on this day, power was was released in order for you to live out the purpose that God has called you to live you're gonna need a power above your own 
You're going to need to tap into something supernatural that is above yourself. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says it this way, that the spirit that God has given us does not make us timid. Instead, his spirit fills us with power, love, and self-control. Man, I hope that you, that you don't miss this Christmas, that you don't let another day go by, that like on this day, and that's the beauty of Christmas is that, yeah, there was a, a day it happened like on that day, but there can be a, a this day for you today. Like on this day, peace can be yours. You don't need to be searching for it. Like on this day, purpose can be given. On this day, power can be released into your life. Don't miss this Christmas. Come on, let's unwrap those gifts together. Everyone bow your heads across this worship center. Can we just receive that together? Maybe you're here today and you just, you know, you, maybe you kind of find yourself in one of those reasons why you kind of have been missing Jesus. Maybe you haven't been paying attention. Like, like, like maybe Jesus has been showing up and trying to get your attention, but you just haven't noticed him around you. Or maybe you can sympathize with that, with the, that person that says, I just don't have any more room. My room, my, my heart is crowded with other things, my life is crowded. There's a lot of junk that has accumulated in my heart and in my life. Or maybe you're here today and you, maybe you're living your life in such a way that you say, no, I'm good. I don't really think I need, I don't need Jesus. I don't need a Savior like today. On this day, you can be made new. On this day, you can get the peace you're looking for. On this day, God can give you purpose and a power in your life. How do you do that? Well, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. Some of you, that's the first step. You just need to surrender your life to Jesus. Maybe you're here today, and, and that's something that you just sense God, like you can sense him now tugging you in that direction. Or maybe that Maybe you're here and you've said something like that before. You know God. You just allowed your life to get crowded and cluttered, maybe sidetracked by other things. And today's the day, on this day, for you to come back. Come back home. With every head bowed and eye closed, I want, I want to pray for you right where you're seated. I'm not going to have you come up to the front or single you out in any way. I just want to pray a prayer of surrender. So if that's you, if you're ready, like on this day, to make this day your day of salvation. With every head bowed and eye closed, do me a favor. I want to pray for you. Just lift up your hand and be bold. Just say, Pastor, pray for me. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Lift it high, yeah, yeah, amen. Yes, amen, amen. Praise God. Yeah, in the back, amen. Amen, young man, so proud of you, amen. Praise God, praise God. Go ahead and put your hands down. Pray, pray something like this. Just say, Jesus, say his name. Whis Jesus. On this day, come on, on this day, I surrender my life to you. I declare, Jesus, you are my Lord, my Savior. Come live inside of me and make me brand new. Today, God, I receive your peace. I receive a new purpose for living. I receive a power to carry it out, God. On this day, I am yours, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, God, for closing the gap and coming to my rescue. Today, Jesus, we remember you. We celebrate you. And we thank you that on this day, you rescued us. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Come on, if you receive that word, will you just celebrate Jesus today? Amen. Amen. We are so thankful for all God is doing in and through your life, and we would love to continue helping you on your journey. To find out what your next steps are in your relationship with Christ, go to ilovediscovery.church forward slash next steps. At Discovery Church, it's our mission to teach people to love God passionately, love each other authentically, and change the world for the cause of Christ. And it's that mission that drives everything we do as a church. Join us next week for our new series, 
the best year ever.